back for another weekend preview. Weekend preview here for October 15th and 16th. We're approaching the halfway point of October. And now joined again by Ed Burgart. Ed, my friend, good to see you again. First of all, what part of the world are you in right now? Well, right now I'm in Grants, New Mexico, headed to uh, Terre Haute, Indiana. So I'm going to spend the night in Tucumcari. Tomorrow in Tulsa, and I'll be in Terre Haute to visit my wife and family starting Saturday. And then the following week, we'll have the uh, Challenge Championships over at uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis. I'm on the AQHA Racing Committee, so I'll be at the Racing C Committee meeting on Friday the 21st. And I'll be going to the races on Saturday the 22nd. Sounds perfect. I've been there once before. It was a tremendous facility. Have you been there for live racing? It was there last uh, year, early in the year. I met Eric uh, Hallstrom. I've at that time, Bill Downs was the announcer. I've never met John Dooley yet, but uh, I've heard nothing but good things about him. He's one of the top announcers in the country. And Michael Rona has a lot of high accolades for him. So looking forward to meeting John. And I really enjoyed uh, the, the race, the racing a action there. They have, also have a casino, which my wife enjoyed. So it works out for both of us. All right. So uh, good to hear. Good to see you in person last week at Los Al. Good to hear as well. First of all, a little recap. Uh, how was it being back in the booth for a couple of nights there at Los Al? I'll tell you what, as soon as I walked back in the booth, I looked around and I said, has it really been almost three years? It didn't mm -hmm. seem like it once I walked back up there and everything just felt natural to me that night. And of course, you know, good horses will make you a lot more exciting too. So to watch the great championship race between a political pens and impress them, I think that was the fastest uh, championship race we've had since 2010. That's how good both horses ran and looking forward to them coming back in the champion of champions and danger. Of course, he's been invited. He, yeah. As far as I know, he's accepted. I'll see him. And I'll see the connections next week when I'm in uh, Indiana. So we'll find out more about danger. It's going to probably be about two to five to win the challenge championship there. So going to be a great uh, champion of champions coming up later in the year. Yeah, it's pointed to be a very uh, good matchup, a uh, good final of the champion of champions, the 50th edition uh, this season. A little bit, uh, I have the list here for the for the Golden State Million Trials. Um, obviously, the names that kind of stood out that night were Jericho and Cyber Attack. Uh, but what do you think about those trials? I thought there were a lot, a lot of good performances, but those two were heads and shoulders above everybody else. When Jericho won, I thought that's going to be the fastest qualifier. Yeah. I couldn't believe the stride that Jericho showed the last 16th of a mile of Gallup that huge. Then all of a sudden, Cyber Attack comes back, who's quicker early than Jericho, and the finish is just as good. So it's going to be a great final. So I think one of those two is definitely going to win the race, unless something unforeseen happens. You've got eight other good horses in there, but I was really, really impressed with both of them. Um, so right now, it's a toss-up to me as to which one is going to be the one to beat. Yeah, they they looked uh, a little bit of uh, separating separating themselves from the other eight, other eight runners, but those two uh, took a took a standout approach on trials night. All right, because we had uh, plenty of long shots on Sunday night, uh, there was nobody in the picks. Nobody hit the pick six, so we'll have a pick six carryover for this Saturday night uh, at Los Alamitos ten race program. I want to talk about a couple of races with you here on uh, this Saturday night. And I know you had a couple of races that you want to take a look at, right? Well, looking at the pick six, you always kind of want to angle, uh, center on a horse you might think is a single. Yeah. I thought in the first uh, leg of the pick six, which is race number five in the 10 race program, the uh, the bottom horse, uh, Chit Chats, definitely a horse you might want to look at singling on the uh, six race sequence. Uh, coming out of much, much better races, turned the head when the gates opened last time out and broke a good two to three length slow, complete toss out race. The time before ran a really solid race against a horse called Price Fixer, who I believe came back to run third in either a stakes or a trial after that. And if you take a look at the rest of the horses in the race that Chit Chat's in, you've got two horses coming off maiden claiming victories, and the other three are coming off fairly dismal performances. So I think it's a great opportunity for Chit Chat to get back on the right track. You get an outside post, and I think that's a good way to kick off the pick six. Yeah, he's dropping in class for the first time in his career, so he will be uh, attracted there with the class drop and the outside post. I'm going to skip ahead here in the PPs going over to race number nine. This is the, the start of the late daily double. I thought it was an interesting uh, maiden event here for the two-year-olds because we got some some horses that are changing hands, some courses that are coming for Trudy Charles, and also uh, a runner, uh, a couple of runners uh, that are coming in from uh, from Ridoso. Right. You know, notice how good the Riodoso horses ran here last week in the trials, and I think a lot of times you have to take into consideration they're coming down from a high altitude to sea level. That's going to give them a lot more air the first time out. Plus, they've been running longer distances and a little bit more fit than some of these other horses that haven't run quite as far. But in this particular race, I'm going to go for a horse that I've been waiting to come back on, one cool dude uh, who drew the rail again. But the rail, I think, is going to be a good spot this time compared to when one cool dude ran 
in a futurity trial, I believe, late last May. Yeah. If you remember, uh, Jose, that was the night that horses from the inside were not qualifying. I think Future Version was on the rail, yes. several of the horses. One cool dude didn't break, made a huge run to get third against Henry D, who came back to qualify for the finals of the uh, Ed Burke Million. But uh, take a look at one cool dude on the rail here. Trial where they're all maidens. Yeah, he was right around 19 to 1. And I thought after not breaking all that, well, there was a pretty solid third. Yeah, it was a very solid third. He didn't hesitate right there at the start. I thought it broke about a length, about a length slow in that race. And horses just weren't making up ground from the inside. This horse made a good run. He's been freshened. And a couple of things I like, he's uh, taking the uh, blinkers off, which is always a good sign to get a horse more focused in the gate. Plus, he's been gelded since that start as well. So I think you're going to look for huge improvement here from one cool dude. And the price should be right in here. You've got a couple of class droppers coming in from Rio Dosa, including a horse that's going to probably be the favorite, the uh, number four horse. This runner, uh, most only by the name of Lil Cuervo Cartel, is also listed as a first-time gelding in, uh, here. So that's... That might be something that's attractive as well for the for the betting public, right? Right. Little Cuervo Cartel. Take a look at the trial he comes out of. I think it was the uh, Rainbow Futurity trial last time. At Jericho won that race. Yes. Uh, little Cuervo Cartel was a respectable fifth. Had a little bit of trouble, but not a lot of trouble in that race. But the runner-up in that race came back, I believe, and won a stakes the previous night or the same night uh, in one of the overnight races So here at Los Alps. Coming out of a race which produced two next-out winners. So I, I definitely think that this is a horse you're going to have to watch for and probably be the one that one cool dude's going to have to outrun here's the workout this was september 27th it was a solo workout but it was a good solid move and what I, what i liked about this drill was his ability to break out of the gate in good order yeah he broke out in good order he's running just a little bit head high here but the chucks is kind of sitting on him so i think a little curve cartel a uh, turn in a better than look workout performance can run much much faster and dropping down from that high altitude here to the uh, lower uh, altitude of Los Alamitos the first time over the track will probably be one of his best efforts. All right, that's, so that's a couple of races to look for in the pick six sequence with Ed Burgard. Talked about that opening leg and also a little Cuevo cartel and one cool dude in race number nine. Well, I can tell you, <laughs> watching last week's show, my, my dog Noodles, he was a fan of Princess. <laughs> Princess was having a ball last week's show. Well, yeah, Princess, for some reason, as soon as you came on last week, I'll say, but there was... <laughs> There was actually some noise outside my house. That's what got Princess excited. Then I heard Noodles got excited. Yes. So, I mean, uh, we had a, a dog show going on as well. And I think right now you can see Princess is pretty well behaved in the background, has not made a sound. So I think uh, maybe Princess is getting accustomed to being on uh, with you and talking about the horses. I think so. She heard my voice. She's like, I know that guy. I barked at him last week. He had enough of me. So it'll be good. Well, Ed, it's good to hear you. Good to, good to see you in person as well. Uh, have safe in your travels and have fun at Indiana. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Michael Rona back. He's got some great Super Derby trials to call on yes. Sunday. All the all the big guns in, in it. I just saw there's five trials that night. And you went, went, once you get the overnight and take a look at the horses, Jose, you got A Political Candy, you've got Golden Boy, uh, you've got Whiskey Glasses, uh, you've got um, several other big names in there as well. Um, there's five uh, Scoops Dynasties in there. So I've named four out of the five. Bomb Cyclone. Them. Yeah. And bomb cyclone. So you're yeah. talking, they're all in different trials. So it's going to be interesting to find out who's going to be the fastest qualifier. It's going to be fun. Can't wait. And I uh, hope to see you back uh, later this winter at Los Alamitos. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jose. The Los Alamitos Halloween Carnival is back for the first time in three years. It's a fun night for the entire family on Saturday, October 29th. We'll have games for kids of all ages, pony rides, a costume contest for cash prizes, and more. Plus, live horse action at Los Alamitos. Admission is only $3 for adults and free for children 17 and under. It'll be a howling good time. For info, call 714-820-2800 or visit LosAlamitos.com. Yeah, that's right. That is correct. Nobody hit the pick six. That means Chris had left over $30,000 in the pick six for this upcoming Saturday night. And it looks like a fun sequence here with 10 races. Yeah, it certainly is. Got some wide open races and it's going to be a nice size pool. 
we're talking somewhere like out with $32,000 plus carryover, you know, 140 to 150 range. So it'll be a nice way to start things off this weekend. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm kind of uh, thinking. I'm getting to feel that like we can get to that 150,000 in total money uh, for this uh, Saturday night. So 10 races. I was just glancing at the entries for Sunday because they're out. They came out as soon as we were, were uh, you know, recording this uh, this part of the program. We got 10, 10 races on Sunday uh, night with uh, the Los Alamitos Super Derby trials. Uh, lots of big names in those trials. So uh, looking forward to those trials. But let's focus on Saturday night. Pick six here. We'll begin with race number five. We're going to take a look at race number ten. Uh, excuse me, race number nine here, because you got you got like a horse that uh, you like a horse towards the outside, right? Yeah, I certainly do. Uh, the nine horse uh, in ninth race, the seven horse lay outside, gambling favorite. This horse had yeah, showed a little bit of ability in his debut. Uh, Mike Castle doesn't get him ready to rumble too harshly in the morning. Doesn't push him early. He was a C and a C plus worker prior to uh, uh, two uh, actually three troubled efforts. And the horse's last effort was a very good. Uh, Good finish last time, despite some trouble along the way, and, and improved immensely on my charts. It was like a 19, a 1590 horse to like a 1563. Improved like over two lengths on my charts of trouble track variant in that last race and in the third lifetime start. So, with another expected step forward, drawn nice to the outside, has a big look here at the outcome. So, this was September 11th. It was his first start, a little bit of a month plus break, a month and a week. And also, the key thing, this was his first time from the outside post, right? And he, he ran fairly well. What did you like in this uh, this trip? Yeah, this horse, I got a little fractious in the outside. I moved his head around a little bit hurly. Uh, broke up, broke a little slow, and uh, a brush, broke a little slow and uh, skied a little bit early. Uh, kind of slickly, the nice size animal, kind of slow in the stride. But put for the big run midway under a hand shift throughout, which starting out very strongly the final half of the affair. And... Uh, Got up there for a pretty good second, and the big gallop out. The horse is a nice size animal. These horses usually take a little bit of time to, to run to the, to the set ability and get that the big body of theirs moving. And this horse uh, improved immensely in that uh, third lifetime start, drawn right back to the outside. I'm going to give him another look here at the outcome. There are three to one in the morning line to give them all a big chance there in the ninth race on the late pick four and the pick six. Well, if you had him that night for the players that had this horse, that was a tough beat there at 21 to 1. You got for the exact that you missed by a neck, and now the value is gone because 3 to 1 now on Ed Burgard's morning line. But that is just the start of the league, double part of the pick six, part of the pick four. So that could be a very key horse uh, depending on how the, the rest of the pick six shapes up. Yeah, so uh, we got some wide open races in the pick six, many a shipper coming in, and this horse uh, – is up against a decent group of horses. Waving the way was our horse that we liked last time at a little bit of price. Yeah. And uh, one cool dude, not a bad effort down there on the inside there as well. So this one, uh, let's got a big, big look at the outcome now. Gambling favorite drawn right back on the outside post. Nice size runner, a little bit better start here tonight. And he's got a big look there for Mike Castleman and Steve Burns. Gambling favorite in the ninth race, drawn well on post summer seven. Oh, well, I want to say nice job to you these, uh, this, uh, this past weekend on trials night specifically because I, need, I know you had a, a couple of Chris's uh, review video horses come through for the wagering public, right? Yeah, we did. We had a couple of nice video horses come pop up there. Uh, our second choice in a nice race, the four horse, uh, starting out second time over the oval. And then their interesting eagle, very nice effort. That was a video horse for us at a nice price. Ran a very good second at 11 to 1. So those video horses have been doing relatively well as of late, and we'll try to continue on this weekend. All right. Uh, in addition to Los Alamitos, are you tackling anything, any other tracks for the Nine Lines? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got uh, races. We're doing races three through 11, so we're doing handicapping 10 races at Lone Star Park and the last four at uh, Evangeline Downs, and uh, we do really well at Evangeline. That's one of the tracks that we uh, really, uh, Louisiana, we really focus in on. I should call you Chris uh, the Louisiana Man Wade because you do very <laughs> well at Louisiana. That's one of the circuits you focus on. And you come out and do very well. So watch for that, those selections and analysis for Chris Wade and the print edition of the Night Dance program. You can also get the digital edition at losamitos.com. All right, Chris, uh, best of luck with gambling favorite on the outside post in race number nine. All right, boys, let's, let's get her done, as my grandpa used to say. I like that. Uh, have a good night. We'll see you out there in Los Alamitos. All right, boys, you too. The Los Alamitos pick fours are known as night racing's best bets with huge pools, a $1 minimum, and big payouts. It gives horse players more bang for the buck. Our racing programs begin shortly after the major daytime thoroughbred racing action. And the Los Alamitos early pick four always starts with our first race on the card. Big pools, great fun. It's the Los Alamitos pick four. Golden boy gathering them in. Photo golden boy gets up to score. Night racing's best bets always at Los Alamitos. 
Favorite Cartel sired three of the first four Golden State Million finalists, including the fastest. Cyber Attack is putting on quite a display of speed tonight. Meanwhile, in Texas, a Favorite Cartel won the Dash for Cash Derby. But Favorite Blues Man, he streaks to victory. At the major sales, 38 Favorite Cartels sold for 100000 or more. Whether racing or selling, Favorite Cartel can put you in the big game. Contact Burns Ranch today. Well, Professor, there's a lot of tie-ins uh, with that uh, with that favorite cartoon, Burns Ranch. Chad, first of all, welcome back to the program. How was your week here uh, last week, Elosa? It was great, Jose. Business was great. The racing was outstanding. Great performances, both in the Invitational Championship and, of course, in the Golden State Million Trials. Uh, so uh, we expected a great week of uh, racing, and I tell you what, the stars delivered. Uh, Gary Brinson with an outstanding job getting those races started and going. Mm-hmm. Clean run races. Uh, a lot of fun here at Losa. And, uh, you know, I was mentioning there's a lot a lot of tie-ins to that ad that we just ran because the fastest qualifier, Cyber Attack, sired by Favorite Cartel, right? Uh, uh, out of Remembering Rose, we know that those tremendous bloodlines there. But also property of uh, Bobby Cox and Steve Burns. Steve Burns also qualified the full sibling, right, to Cyber Attack Temple Court. To the finals do you know off the top if you if anything comes to mind when was the last time that full siblings qualified to a million dollar final um could it have happened with the same family uh there was one year when powerful favorite was running and Ooh. in that season there was other a couple of other uh females eg high desert had one i think Dr. Yes. burns their one and one of them qualified to each of the million dollar futurities we had that year. Uh, I want to so say, they, I want to say, EG had a uh, rose, something rose. Yeah. Um, remember me, Rose, or remember Rose, something along those lines. Yes. But even uh, you take it one step further in this year's Golden State Million Trials, uh, Cyber Attack, Favorite Cartel, and Remember Me, Rose, the Sister Temple Court, owned by yes. uh, Dr. Steve Burns, of course. How about the fact that brothers qualify both of these horses? So uh, Eduardo Nicasio rides yes. uh, Cyber Attack, and his younger brother, Jose Nicasio, qualifies uh, Temple Core. So I can't remember uh, brothers riding uh, siblings to qualifying uh, races to go in a million dollar futurity. Uh, that little note, of course, uh, shared to me by. Uh, uh, Saul Servin, who uh, mm-hmm. who is the agent from both, he says he got a call from uh, Mr. Carlos Sosa, who used to race uh, under the banner on Jora Racing Corporation up here, and he pointed that out uh, to uh, to Saul as well. So a nice little tie in there. You mentioned the favorite cartel and also the Nicasio brothers yeah. uh, riding both of those horses to uh, to qualifying spots. And Mr. Bobby Cox was involved with favorite cartel, uh, qualified uh, Jericho, the second fastest qualifier there. Yeah. Uh, look, you know, speaking with Ed Burgard earlier in the program, we kind of both feel that Cyber Attack and Jericho kind of separated themselves from the rest of the group, so they are going to be the expected favorites. But uh, there's some very nice uh, running, uh, you know, pedigrees and running lines in those top 10 qualifiers. And I want to mention, how about the drum? I always talk about the drum. I love the drum on trials night because everybody's watching the board, everybody's watching the Times Professor. How about AJ Bourne running and wasting light for ran one two in the very first trial of the night? Had to sweat out 11 trials and held on by the ninth and 10th th- fastest qualifying time. What what a night for them. Yeah, it, that's kind of what happened with the political jet in the Edward Million trial. Yes. Remember, uh-huh. uh, he qualified early on, uh, qualified under the lights. And excuse me, uh, well, well, there was still daylight. And then yes. had to wait all the way uh, till the last trial to see if he uh, made it or not. Once again, a political jet makes the million dollar futurity. So congratulations to... Uh, the quarters uh, corporation, but like you mentioned, both of those early qualifiers lasted, outlasted everyone after a long, long day of trials. Uh, congratulations to them. Uh, they qualified to the uh, to the Golden State Million Futurity. Flash of Gold, one of the late qualifiers, yes. Jose, uh, out of a mayor that produced a political gold who won the Golden State Million Futurity here uh, a couple of years ago in 2020. So uh, yeah. Flash of Gold has that uh, that breeding. Uh, uh, the family has already won this race. So uh, you got to take a good look at that horse and see what happens in a couple of weeks. And, of course, Hay Shaker, the third fastest qualifier, Jose, uh, qualifies after being claimed 
for yes. $4,500 in the Los Alamitos claiming futurity. Uh, so a uh, special, uh, special race there for uh, Hey Shaker. And of course the connections, uh, Jaime Gomez claiming that horse uh, and now seeing the horse qualifying into the million million dollar futurity. We always talk about uh, some of those famous claims uh, mm -hmm. here at Los Alamitos. This will certainly uh, be one to remember. Now in back-to-back -back seasons, the Los Alamitos claiming futurity has been a go-to race for a, for a very popular claim where, you know, last season we they had good success with claims off of that race. And now we're having that success here for Jaime Gomez with Hey Shaker. So looking forward to the final in a few weeks short time. Why don't we look at the replay here of the fastest qualifier, Cyber Attack, and then you had an opportunity to talk with his rider, right? Actually, with the trainer, trainer Chris O'Dell, yes. talked to the trainer right after uh, Cyber Attack visited the winner's circle. Uh, so we'll talk to uh, Chris O'Dell right after we watch this replay of the fastest qualifier, Cyber Attack. Here's a replay. Let's listen to the call by Ed Berger. We're all in the gate. And away they go. And Cyber Attack started off beautifully. Also coming out with the leaders here is Political Royalty down along the inside, trying to close in as a dream to fill. But Cyber Attack is putting on quite a display of speed tonight. And Cyber Attack to the extreme outside continues Political Royalty. But Cyber Attack and Jericho, they're going to probably be the ones to beat in the finals. Finishing second, Political Royalty. And KBN's going to be in a photo with a dream to fill for third. Well, Professor, 9.3.9 .9 was the final eight there for Cyber Attack. Uh, he looked impressive. He broke well, and he took care of business. Yeah, I think Jericho and Cyber Attack both came home in 9.39, uh, and that was pretty similar to the time that Bond Cyclone posted when winning the Los Alamitos 2 million futurity last year. So uh, definitely an outstanding effort from uh, Cyber Attack. Wins that race by two and a quarter lengths. And here's Chris O'Dell talking about the fastest qualifier. Chris, what a way to uh, debut here at Los Alamitos from a cyber attack. A super impressive start, just right out of the gate. Well, he, you know the family. We have success there like always. And uh, what, a, what a great horse. He grabbed a quarter real bad in the rainbow. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've been off so long. I've been trying to grow his foot out a little bit and it takes time to get that done. And so uh, that's why he didn't get to go to the All-American trials and, and whatnot. So we're excited is, you know, we, we know we've got a little bit of something there. There's some talent there and we've just been trying to manage him correctly. So. And like you mentioned, we know the family well, Temple Court, also from the same family, also in the mix right now. You know what, I'm very happy to see that for the Burns and stuff to see that that filly run well like that. Uh, that's a beautiful filly they have in their Temple Court. Uh, gorgeous. And uh, what a combination of Remember Me Rose and Favorite Cartel. Man alive. Can't believe it. And the filly last night, majority interest also out of yes. that mare. So, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to bring one up here like him. Yeah. And speaking of shining, uh, Bomb Cyclone won from the rail, the big race at 2 million futurity. It looked like yes. Cyber Attack was trying to find that uh, inside fine. area yeah. as well. So uh, you, your horses there love to do uh, good things from uh, that part of the track. Towards the inside. Well, he, you know, when they break good like that, like with him, and this track's a little different than, you know, than Riodoso and, and things. And so, uh, you know, he kind of wandered around a little bit, but, you know, he ran, ran an awesome race. We're so happy. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, uh, this is like a deja vu, right, Professor? It seems like every year uh, Christopher Ardell acquires one of these uh, well-bred ones for an expensive price tag, but they have good success, and he's got another one. Yeah, Run For Your Life. We mentioned Powerful Favorite, Bomb Cyclone, Cyclone last year, yeah. and now here he has another one, Cyber Attack. Uh, it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun. Uh, looking forward to that final in just a few short weeks. Let's uh, turn back the clock to Saturday night. We got uh, we had the Los Alamitos uh, Invitational Championship. But professor, professor, remind me, weren't there four millionaires in that field of seven runners? Yeah, we had five grade one stakes winners in the field of seven. Four of them had already uh, reached the million-dollar mark. And, of course, we had the champion, Impressum. We had the defending winner of this race, Powerful Favorite. And we had the two-time champion of champions winner, a political pants on the outside, Super Derby winner, flashback on the inside. What a feel. Yeah, it was quite a feel. Let's uh, let's enjoy this replay here. Uh, Ed Burgard on the mic for the Los Lamitos Invitational. They're all in the gate. 
And away they go in the Los Alamitos Championship. An apolitical pin. Scott off to a beautiful start. Impressum is also running strongly down along the inside. Powerful favorites running back in third. Flashbacks in fourth. But apolitical pins has a gigantic lead here. And it's a lights out performance for apolitical pins. Impressum is going to try to run him down. But no way he's going to catch apolitical pins. He's won two consecutive champion champions. He'll probably be one of the favorites now to beat Impressum and Flashback and powerful favorite. But a lights out performance by apolitical pins and Armando Cervantes. They crush the field. Well, professors, that was vintage Ed Burgard and vintage exactly. Apol- vintage Ed Burgard and vintage A political pens. Uh, the the gate speed has always been his main asset, but it feels like that might have been the best he's ever gonna, gotten out of the gate. Yeah, first of all, uh, just the passion from uh, from Ed Burgard calling that race uh, so much fun to hear and so much excitement there. An outstanding runner like A political pens getting that best, that he was going to have that kind of a lead of impress him after the first 100 yards. That was unbelievable. Uh, and you were talking about what a start from uh, from a political pants. How about we go to Armando Cervantes and listen to what he had to say about that uh, that break from my uh, political pants. Were you on a rocket tonight or what, leaving the gate? You know what? <laughs> this is probably the fastest he has broke out the gates. I mean, I just had to grab on because he flew out the gates and, you know, I just kept him, you know, busy, just yelling at him, yelling at him. And, you know, paid off, thank God, we, we took the, the win. Halfway through the race, he starts kind of drifting a little bit inside. Is that on purpose, just to get closer to uh, mm-hmm. impress him? Or? No, you know what, he's he's always uh, drifted out, out a little bit. But, you know what, I guess he was just trying to see competition. I don't know, man. But, you know, I'm I'm thankful for, you know, for the owners. You know, they ride me and everything. And Monty, forgive me, you know, good horses like this just to look, you know, look good. How, Wait. how far uh, out of the gates before you felt like you took it over? I mean, I, you know what? Just since the beginning, he really? took off like, like yeah. no other day. He took yeah. off fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, said it's a rock, like a ride of rocket. Yeah. Were you, uh, were you kind of conscious of where Impressum was pretty early on, or? Wh- you know what? I didn't see him. I didn't see him from the, from when we started from the gate towards like the wire. I kind of started seeing him a little bit of glints, but I mean from the bottom, I was just it was just gone. Better tonight than in the champion of champions last Oh yeah, last wow. better, really? way better. Yeah, he. I'm telling you, this horse is. I mean, he, he breaks, and it's a, it's a break that you could you kind of control. This time it was just, it was impressive. I just you know I grabbed on the hardest I could because he he bombed out of there. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, I wonder how it feels, Professor, to be aboard a rocket ship. Imagine trying to break and just hold on for dear life because they're breaking so fast. Uh, that's probably exactly what happened there with eight political pens. That's what he said. He's like, I was just holding on. You know, <laughs> most of the time I'm ready, but this time I was just holding on pretty much for dear life because he broke, broke so fast. So I mean, what a tremendous uh, champion of champions we're headed to. Uh, we're gonna get a rematch up between these two stars and press them and uh, and eight political pens with uh, with so much on the line for both of them uh, on December 10th, the 50th running of the $750,000 champion of champions. I'm already counting the dates. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. Time, time is flying by, Professor. Uh, time is flying by. So that's a good recap of both of the big uh, nights of racing last weekend at Los Alamitos. Uh, I talked to Ed Burgard and Christopher Wade about a few races on the Pick 6 sequence. But since I already submitted all my selection for the Nightlands, Professor, I wanted to go back and just tell the, the, the viewing public who I ended up making my lock of the night, uh, which is part of that uh, pick six sequence, if I All remember right. correctly. Let's see. Uh, so we talked to, yeah, so I ended up going in race number seven, the start of the late pick four, 300-yard main event uh, in this spot. And I, I really like the looks of the Invader Felspar for Jose Flores, Mr. Johnny Trotter, Bred by Bobby Cox, uh, ran a uh, four actually four times at Ridoso. Uh, I like the 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 local workout of twelve thirty from the gate, but also the runner she faced she finished second to just Danny Sevi came back to win here locally. Uh, I want to say maybe a week ago or so, uh, and that was a sharp winner. And just Danny Sevi then competed in the trials. Not so sure where she ended up finishing in her trial. But Felspar ran a pretty solid second. And look at the mayor, Nelly Delaney. She was a multiple stakes winner here at Los Alamitos. So I'm hoping her filly, Felspar, 
will also enjoy here Los Alamitos. So that was my single, my lock of the night for Saturday night. Yeah, you mentioned Nelly Delaney uh, won the Southern California Derby, a grade one race, and then came back and beat the boys in the uh, grade one winter championship just a few months later. Uh, she was an outstanding runner here at Los Al, went on to win a couple of other great stakes. Yeah, so that's going to be my single in that late picks, uh, late pick four, and also the pick six sequence. All right, I'm going to pick your marketing brain, Professor. What's the expected pool? What do you think we're getting to? Uh, I think we have a pretty good chance to get to 150000 mm -hmm. for the total pool, yeah. uh, $32,000 going into the carryover. And just kind of thinking of, about how we do on uh, when we put the $10,000 uh, pick six promo, yeah. you know, we usually get to about anywhere between sixty to 75000 uh based on the card. Uh, when we do those these promos, now we're getting we're going triple of that. So I could see another uh, easily about another hundred, at least over a hundred thousand dollars going into the pool. So we should have anywhere between one twenty five to one fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's pretty competitive. There, there are not that many singles that you no. can find in this uh, in this sequence, and we wrap it up with a pretty good uh, allowance race uh, with some stakes winners in there up the ladder. Uh, yeah. uh, candy uh, dice we just ran last week as part of that group as well. So it's a pretty uh, pretty interesting final leg of the pick six. Uh, even, even the early pick four on Saturday is going to be a lot of fun uh, with some nice allowance races that are on the turn. Oh, Jerry. Oh, Jerry's back. back. Yeah, and he's going to be facing Midnight Somewhere, who's had some big performances. That's going to be a nice duel. I don't think they've ever, ever met before. Uh in uh, at this distance, so it should be uh, should be a nice a nice uh, duel between those two. But oh, Jerry has taken on all comers, all rivals, and he's still the king of the thousand yard division. Capture the sea, one of the horses that has gotten the best of uh, of Jerry. Not too many have, but no. Capture the Sea has. He's in this race, and uh, and so is Baby Gronk, another horse that beat uh, oh, Jerry. So uh, that's going to be a fun race to watch on Saturday. Yeah, that's uh, that will close out the. Pick four on Saturday night race number four. Oh, Jerry listed at nine to five on Ed Burgart's morning line. All right, to wrap up the weekend, Professor, uh, of last weekend, excuse me, before we dive into Sunday's card, uh, who ended up winning the consensus, Professor? I told you I felt like there was regression. I couldn't say that hot from last time we did the consensus. There was regression. I felt like the Dodgers. I watched the Dodgers yesterday. I felt like there was regression. So, I didn't do too well, but who took it down? I hate to say this, but it was the hitman. <laughs> the hitman. Curtis Trees. What a, well what a done. Great... And uh, as soon as it happened, he sent me a text saying, is anyone going to mention that I just hit the trifecta cold <laughs> in race number seven? He had a flash of gold winning Ooh. that race. Misanto running second, Navaja running third. And I think it paid like 200 bucks, that trifecta. Wow. Uh, so the, right there, uh, nice, nice job. By the hitman, he takes the belt for the uh, Golden State Million Futurity Trials. Fortunately, Jose, we don't have long to wait to uh, <laughs> try to get that belt away from him. We have the Los Al Two Million Trials next month. I don't like it when he has the belt. <laughs> no, you'll have an opportunity to get it right back in about in about a, a month and a week's time, probably around there, as uh, we approach the Los Angeles Trials, which will be November twentieth. November twentieth. So yeah. Right around a week, uh, a month and a week there until we have the next consensus here. So, uh, you know, Hitman. The Hitman, so so gracious in his win. Uh, he waited only until he, he crushed that oh, trial. He waited, like, he waited like two minutes. <laughs> that. Right, for, cool. uh, shout out to uh, to our horse, uh, horse woman and horse men and also our people working in the racing office because, Professor, the entries are out for Sunday. That gives us an opportunity. To kind of glance at some of the names that are entered in Sunday night's card here at Los Alamitos, which has trials for the Super Derby. Oh, and it's going to be a heck, a heck of a night as well on Sunday night. Uh, we'll start with trials in race number six. Uh, and we have uh, five divisions to the Los Alamitos Super Derby, the, pool, the, uh, the purse money for the Great One Super Derby, over 980 thousand dollars this year and what a group of stars uh bomb cyclone we mentioned bomb cyclone he's gonna be in the opening trial race number six starting from post 
number six. That'll be the first time here at Los Alamitos that he has not started from post number one, Jose. And we know what he can do from post number one. Uh, he'll be facing uh, Chisholm, who, uh, who's qualified to several great one futurities last year. Benevolent coming off of a PCQHRA Breeders' Derby uh, final that, mm -hmm. that he competed in. Toxic Relationship, uh, who had won her first, let's see, who had won four races in a row uh, and then ran in the All-American Oaks. Uh, this uh, this filly is out of uh, the same mare that produced the champion Danger. Mm -hmm. so that's race number six, trial number one. Moving on to race number seven, Sweet Dash of Fire, the winner of the PCQHRA Breeders' Derby is in that race. Uh, just fire me who ran in the Ridoso Futurity last year, set for it, runner up in the Golden State Derby, is in that race. So uh, pretty competitive, pretty wide open race there. Sweet Dash of Fire is probably the uh, the one to watch. Mm -hmm. Moving on to race number eight, Jose Whiskey Glasses, who won the Golden State Million Futurity last year, looking to uh, start off his uh, kind of like his fall campaign there with a big Big effort with the uh, in the Los Alamitos Super Derby Trial Division number three, uh, Corona Yo, who's coming off of the PCQHRA Reviewers Derby. But the one to watch will be number seven in this race, Jose, a political candy V, the uh, All American Derby winner, the Rainbow Derby winner, the runner up in the Los Alamitos Winter Derby here at Los Al. Uh, he returns and will be headlining race number eight. Juan Pulido in to ride a political candy V there drawing the outside post. And like you mentioned, uh, his Los Alamitos winter derby here was back in February was from the outside post. So a political candy V the horse to watch in that trial. We'll move on to race number nine. This is the fourth trial to the Los Alamitos super derby. And we have golden boy from uh, post number five. Ruben Lozano is back aboard and Ruben Lozano was mending a few uh, injuries during uh, you know, a minor uh, incident uh, during the morning training that did side eye him for uh, you know, over a month yeah. uh, here at Los Al, but uh, great to see Ruben Lozano back and uh, back aboard number five, Golden Boy. Uh, others in this race in hot pursuit who ran in a couple of futurities last year. Uh, ran second in the Edward Million, third in the Golden State Million last year. Uh, that's a good reason, who's qualified to a bunch of races, at least five of them right off count here uh, at Los Alamitos. So a, a very good, contentious race number nine. Of course, Golden Boy, the big star. And in race number 10, Scoops Dynasty. Yes. The multiple derby winner. Looking for a derby win number three on the year. All of them graded derbies here at Los Alamitos. He's going to start from post number seven, Scoop Dynasty. He's five for five. Jose, you can't get any hotter than that. And no. uh, he'll be in the final trial here at Los Al. Other good horses in this race, uh, Amadeus MV uh, is one of them. Dasha Dynasty, another, uh, another of those uh, runners out of Dasha Freda. Uh, watch out, who's been in several... Uh, uh, stakes races here at Los Alamitos, but once again in race ten, we got to look at number seven, Scoops Dynasty, five four five here at Los Al. He's he's gotten so good out of the gate, Professor, and that just made him pretty much unbeatable this year. He's just been breaking so much better. Uh, he's you know he's very good at the distance. It's gonna be tough to uh, over uh, you know take the throne away from Scoops Dynasty or uh, you know take that undefeated twenty twenty two record away from him. Because he's been so professional out of the gate. Um, you knew, uh, you know, we both liked Amadeus off the layoff. That was a great prep win to get him pointing toward these trials. Uh, he should have no problem with the 400 yards. But, uh, yeah, the, the horse to watch, without a doubt, will be Scoop's dynasty here uh, from the outside post. Yeah, I mean, that's four outstanding males that will be in action. Again, Bomb Cyclone. Uh Golden Boy. Yeah, a political candy. He, Scoops Dynasty, and an outstanding Philly, the PCQHRA Breeders Derby winner, winners, P, Sweet Dash of Fire. So, uh, toxic relationship as well in there. So, just a super group. And again, going for a, a super amount of money uh, $980,000 as the gross purse in the Los Alamitos Super Derby. And uh, that will be our Sunday card here at Los Al. A pair of 10 race cards. 
both of them very, very attractive with the carryover on Saturday and uh, all these big names on Sunday. Yeah, looking forward to it. A uh, couple of nice uh, racing carts, competitive as well. And also, it's always fun when we got trials and we can watch the clock there throughout the night and uh, look at see what happens. Speaking of uh, nice purses, purses for for the for the patrons for the pa for the public visiting us will be up for grabs, Professor, oh, in the yeah. Halloween Carnival yeah. and Costume Contest Saturday, October 29th at 6 p.m. Uh, how's it been? How are your emails running off the hook? Have the calls come through? I know people have been waiting for the return of the carnival contest. Absolutely. Every time that I walk through, uh, the, uh, the main line in the grandstand area, I, someone always says, hey, costume contest is back. I'm going <laughs> to yes. win this year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see what you got, my friend. Let's see what you got. Uh, $500 is the grand prize. And that's only for the, uh, those that win their divisional, uh, contests of course those are divided by age so uh -huh. you get two hundred dollars if you win one of those age divisions and then you move on to the grand prize and if you win that that's another 500 so you could walk away uh with 700 dollars in prize money if you're the overall uh costume contest winner we're gonna have uh prize money for the top three in it each category divisional category and of course lots of uh uh, carnival games, lots of candies for the kids. We're going to have pony rides. We're even going to have, Jose, uh, a contest for the pony riders. Ooh. Uh, let's let them decorate their ponies, and we'll uh, we'll give them a prize to the top to the top uh, decorated ponies on that night. So it's going to be a very colorful night, lots of fun, lots of candy to go around, and can't wait to see who's going to be the uh, 2022 Costume Contest Grand prize winner this time of the year professor time just flies by because there's always something to look forward to every week uh either on track promotions or a big date or an event or you know weekend trials it's just it's just uh, before we know it we'll be talking two million futurity trials night and champion to champions night here in just about yeah. a month and a half yeah because we have the wild west futurity next next sunday yes then after that we would have the golden state million final Mm -hmm. And then we get the Super Derby final. I mean, I, I, I know what you're saying because we haven't <laughs> ran the Super Derby trials yet, but yes. you can already line them up. You know, yeah. all the big races coming up here at Los Alamitos. Don't miss a minute of it. Make sure you watch Jose Contreras on uh, FanDuel every, every Saturday and Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Or, better yet, come out and join us for a fun night here of uh, live action at Los Al. Yeah, and our approximate post time, Professor, this week about 6 o'clock. It's going to be 6.10 on, uh, on Saturday. Okay. And uh, I would think about the same time on Sunday as well. And, of course, 10 race cars on board. All right. Speaking, I, I was looking at uh, the Halloween Carnival promo. Let us uh, Give us your, your favorite candy bar. What's your favorite candy bar? Hmm. Uh, how about Baby Ruth? Oh, Baby underrated. Ruth. I like that pick, Professor. I like that pick. I'll give you another underrated pick, Mars. Remember Mars with almonds oh, yeah. and chocolate? Mm -hmm. That's my pick. That's one of my favorites. There you go. Some yeah. underrated, under the radar top pay, of pay, 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 payday, right? That, that's the bar. Yeah, that, yeah. That one. Payday. Like a payday. I yeah, like yeah, a payday, Jose. Like a payday. Um, all right. Uh, anything else for the program, for the being plugged, Professor? No, can't wait. Can't wait for the, uh, the, the carryover, seeing the nice pool, seeing if uh, some of the picks come through. Uh, we're going to see some uh, uh, new new faces here, Invaders from Ridoso Downs on Saturday. And just can't wait for the Super Derby trials. I mean, I, it's going to be great. Thank you for the interviews and the video recaps, Professor. And uh, I'll see you this weekend here at Los Alamitos. Thanks so much, Jose. Have a great week.
Los Alamitos Pick 4s are known as Night Racing's best bets, with huge pools, a $1 minimum, and big payouts. It gives horse players more bang for the buck. Our racing programs begin shortly after the major daytime thoroughbred racing action, and the Los Alamitos Early Pick 4 always starts with our first race on the card. Big pools, great fun. It's the Los Alamitos Pick 4. Golden Boy gathering them in. Botile Golden Boy gets up to score. Night Racing's best bets, always at Los Alamitos.